Hi chem students, let's talk about buffers a little bit more and uh, at, by the end of this we're going to introduce a new equation called the henderson hasselbach equation which will simplify our calculations of the pH for one of these systems greatly. So we're going to begin by imagining that we're going to mix an acid HX and some salt NAX. Now as you can immediately see these have a common ion, okay, that's that X part and I just use X because it could be anything, it could be, a, it could be anything that creates an equilibrium with that acid that it can't be HCl you're not going to get a uh, with a strong acid you're not going to get a buffer but any weak acid where that X is an anion that makes this a weak acid this will work and sodium creates a strong electrolyte and that's what we want to play with is strong electrolytes here so we're going to create a buffer um, because they have the common ion and we have to realize that there's going to be some equilibrium constant uh, associated with this weak acid called case of A so the first thing we're going to want to let imagine in our heads is that the salt, we're going to mix these two things together. So we're going to first imagine the salt breaking apart into its ions. And that's because this is a 100% dissociation if we have a strong electrolyte. So just let it happen. So the way I'm going to go about doing this is I'm going to make the assumption, you know what? Initially, my concentration is NAX initial. And there's none of these other guys in here. That's my initial situation. And what I do know is that all of my um, NAX is going to break apart. So this is going to be minus that initial concentration. This will be plus the initial concentration and plus the initial concentration. So when I'm all finished, I'm, I should have none of the uh, salt left and some of this uh, sodium ion. How much? an equal concentration to what I began with and then same thing for my X minus I should have some of this initial amount now just for fun let's instead of calling that and carrying around the NA part uh, we can just call this the initial concentration of our X minus if we'd like uh, that way it's easier to kind of keep track of but it doesn't matter the key thing is, is that we have and we can get an amount a concentration of that substance once we've done that, we're going to allow the, uh, or finally take a look at the equilibrium created by our acid. So in this particular case, our acid is HX, and HX is going to react with water. And when it reacts with water, it's going to form the H3O plus, the hydronium ion, because it's an acid, and it's going to increase the concentration of this stuff. And also, it's going to produce this X minus. So I want you to look at this. My initial concentration... My initial concentration of my acid is going to be HX naught, my initial amount. This is the liquid, so we don't really care about the water. There is no H3O plus. We have not put any into the container. However, I have put some X minus in. I put it in when I placed the salt in there. So that salt is a source of this particular substance, which is part of the equilibrium. So the common ion, when we put the salt in there, we've created a source of that. So there's some initial amount. That's quite different than what we've done before because before there was not anything on the product side initially. So just by looking at Le Chatelier's principle, this reaction is going to shift even further, even less to the right because there's already some stuff there. And that means when we make our little bit of change to reach equilibrium, it's going to be even smaller. So make sure that that last little bit I've just talked about makes sense to you. If it does, then you've really got a good handle on Le Chatelier's principle and these acid-base reactions. Well, we can take a look immediately and say, you know what? I can see that Q is equal to zero because it's going to be zero times this number divided by my initial concentration of my acid. And zero times anything is going to be zero. And that means it, it's definitely less than, my Q now is definitely less than my K, so I'm going to shift to the right. All right, so that means I'm going to have a minus X. This is a liquid, I don't care. I'm going to have a plus X and a plus X. So when I get to equilibrium, I can calculate my equilibrium in this fashion. So the good news is, is that I know for this particular guy that Ka is equal to the concentration of H3O plus times my X minus concentration. 
divided by my HX concentration, but all of these are at equilibrium. And if you take a look, that's what this row right here is. This row is my equilibrium row. Right, so since that's my equilibrium row, then I can just take those values and put them in. So I should get x times my initial concentration of my salt plus x divided by my initial concentration of my acid minus x. Well, as I said just a moment ago, because of the presence of the salt at the beginning of this, of the salt at the beginning, this common ion is going to make this reaction shift less to the right than it normally would. That means x is even smaller than it normally would be, and the small x approximation is even more applicable. So I can simplify this to get little x times x minus divided by my initial forgot my naught there. Okay, fine. That's all great, but let's rearrange this a bit. Let's see. We got Ka is equal to x times, and I'm going to make the ratio of the initial concentration of my salt, the initial concentration of my acid, and then I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to take the natural log. I'm going to take the log of both sides. Actually, I'm going to take the negative log. So I'm going to take the negative log of Ka, and I'm going to take the negative log of x, and then I have to remember that if I multiply right here, that that gets added together, so plus, so this negative log plus another negative log of that ratio. And you might be thinking, why would anyone do this? Well, this, this, this number right here, this is my pKa. It's the negative log of my Ka, and the negative log of anything is the p of it. So I have the pKa is equal to, what? well, let's go back up here and take a look. What is x equal to? x is equal to my hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium. So this is the pH. So it's equal to the pH minus the log of this ratio of my salt, x minus the initial concentration of it, divided by my acid. All right, one more rearrangement, and we're almost there. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of my x minus initial divided by my hx naught. And we have the first beginnings that looks like an equation. This is the Henderson-Hasselbach, but you'll also see it written in this fashion. That it's the pKa, the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base the initial base concentration divided by the initial concentration of the acid. And this will always work as well. Uh, don't rearrange these. Always keep it as base over acid. Always keep this as pKa, and you'll get the right answer. So I'm gonna, this is the derivation, then, of this Henderson-Hasselbach equation. I have to do one more example for you to show you how to use this equation, and it's really easy. So this was just a, uh, a way for you to see where this all comes from. You need to probably put this little memory, put this little guy in your memory banks right here. This is all good stuff, and you can use it on the test only for buffers. If you are not using a buffer and you use this equation, it's absolutely 100% incorrect. So you need to know when you can use this and when you can't. To help you do that, go back and watch the previous video again about how do I identify whether I've got a buffer or not.